of a human being there is one a very you can say specific uh, and unique habit and everybody has this habit and it occurs in everybody's life now you'll see sometimes that you are speaking to somebody you're having a discussion with somebody else and that person standing in front of you and you speak to that person but that insan the other person who you're speaking to their thoughts have gone astray they're not listening to you and this is called lack of focus and attention the person's looking at you and you think that that person's ears are taking in what you're saying but that person's not paying attention and focusing and concentrating on what you're saying thoughts are somewhere else so the conclusion the consequence of that is the words that you have mentioned or said they have not been conveyed to that person and that person has not understood what you're saying or listened to what you're saying and this is such a habit that this occurs in everyday life and gives us all loss relationships break down quarrels arise disputes arise losses are incurred and this occurs in everyday normal life we don't pay attention to this and in our business life this occurs as well that you're speaking to somebody and he's not paying attention to what you're saying and then when you speak about buying selling giving taking you say i said this to you you didn't say this to me but we agreed on this no i didn't hear what you said why because that person wasn't listening and so the business relationship breaks down and in friendship this occurs as well that the friend is speaking the other friend is looking at him but not listening not focusing and the words are not absorbed and then there's a loss there and an argument starts there somebody speaking the other friend is not paying attention he's looking at him maybe he's understanding not understanding but he's not looking or thinking or paying attention properly and then he misses what he said and the argument starts and at home this is a common complaint the husband and wife this is a common factor a common argument the husband comes home in the evening after working etc and then his wife says something to him and he's not paying attention that whatever is in a person's mind it's plugging away at his brain bugging his brain then he's thinking about those things and then differences occur because people don't listen to each other and when the husband speaks and the wife doesn't concentrate or her thoughts are somewhere else and then an argument starts that i said something you didn't listen and another conclusion comes she says you didn't say this to me and then an argument breaks out so this is such a communication a communication gap if we look with respect to dunya the world we live in then this is a practice that causes a lot of loss and a lot of issues now this is a worldly for example loss you can say but if we keep this link with regards to the akhirah then there's a bigger loss and then you'll have loss in the deen and in your akhirah and the hereafter so with allah a person should keep a link if he keeps such a link where a person doesn't pay attention to what Allah Ta'ala is saying, then that will be severe loss. In ibadat, in worship, different worship actions, this is what happens. Especially the biggest ibadah that Allah Ta'ala has given to us, which is salah, prayer. This is the supreme ibadah, worship. Everything we attain through salah. The akhirah, the hereafter, the darajat, the rank, the status, maqam, everything is attained via salah salah is such an act of worship that in reality nobody can compare compete with the action of salah all the other mujahidat we do is dhikr adhkar different uh, worship actions tazkiyah purification and all other actions but the center focal point of all of our efforts is that we want to improve our salah remember this all of the effort that we are making 
hard work and trying to improve our lives through dhikr, remembering Allah. All the people, all of the different types of efforts that a person makes, the Sufi individuals who do ibadah all nights long. And the objective, remember, is one. And our objective should also be the same. That what are we trying to improve in reality? Our salah, our namaz, our prayer. Because salah will deliver us to success in every phase in, our, in the hereafter. Otherwise, from the beginning, after death to the end, we will lose out. Look, Allah has given us this ibadah, salah. And how did we earn this gift, this reward of salah, this worship action? We got this gift from such a place that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sallallahu alayhi wa And we got this gift from that blessed great place and that great meeting. Remember that ibadah, wherever it comes from, then there are effects of that gift, of that worship action. Uh, so we have to, we have to think and pay attention to how did we get this action. Take any, for example, medicine in the world. If you eat medicine here, for example, then you go to Saudi Arabia and the climate's different there, then this medicine here in this country will not, um, be effective there. So we say, oh, yes, you can have that medicine here, but here the climate is hot, so we have to change some quality. Some individuals do take medicines from here to hotter climates, but there, when you buy medicine locally, that medicine will have more effect because the climates different, there are different factors and elements that come into play. So in the same way, ibadah, salah, how did we get salah? Allah Ta'ala gave salah at the arsh, the point of the arsh at the time when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam met Allah. So the effects of that gift from the arsh of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has an effect ongoing. Say subhanallah, subhanallah. So all of those effects come into our salah. Remember this. We have to think about where was salah given, the great meeting, the impact of salah. We just pray salah. We don't know that how great and valuable is salah. And those who attain the, the beauty of salah, then their salah is lengthy. It's got concentration, gives them peace of heart. And people who pray salah all night long, they feel enjoyment. And it's hidden in their salah. The enjoyment. We'll see this, we experience this. And Qiyam has its enjoyment, standing and ruku, bowing, and tasbih, and prostration. And every posture, movement, part of salah, position has its unique, specific enjoyment and effect. So such a great ibadah that Allah has given to us. And in this ibadah, we say Allahu Akbar. We say Allah is the greatest so in reality, many people haven't even realized that what surah did I recite in this salah? Which rakat am I in? Some people don't even know that what surah did Imam Sahib uh, read and we said, Assalamu alaikum wa ta'ala, Assalamu alaikum wa ta'ala, and that's it. We forgot everything in between. So let's think, what sort of ibadah is it that we're doing? That all the defects that are present in our ibadah. We prayed salah, and it's like, for example, I've spoken to someone, he was watching me, looking at me, I was looking at him, we were speaking, but we didn't pay attention. So we didn't register what that person was saying. So it's salah, if we are going in front of Allah, saying Allah Akbar, presenting ourselves to Allah, when we were praying, then where were our thoughts? What were we thinking about? Were those thoughts in our mind that were there for the rest of the day that, are, that have overwhelmed our day? And many people say that, how can I correct my salah? How can I improve my salah? What do I do to improve my salah? So we can't say that what we're doing is correct. No. What Allah, what Allah Ta'ala wants, that is correct. Now, if I pray salah the way I want and I think that's correct, no. I pray salah, I've done sajda, I've done ruku, alhamdulillah, this is a great thing, a great tawfiq, Allah has given us the capability to do this. But in reality, when this salah will be presented in the court of Allah, what will be its condition, its status, its effect, uh, effectiveness? So in the dunya, if we're not feeling the goodness of our salah, such a great ibadah, in reality, after every salah, our life should have improved and changed, there should be spirituality and improvement. It's like we've just come from the when a person says Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum and complete salah we should be full of noor and sort of um, beautiful effects and improvement from the salah but we don't have this because we're not paying attention focused in our salah there's a lack of awareness we say Allahu Akbar what did I say when I stood quickly finished the rakah four rakahs full that's it and I've done such that I've prostrated and I've finished my salah that's it 
I've prayed my salah. There are defects in my salah. So in the dunya, there's a big loss if we don't pay attention to each other. There's arguments at home, wife, husband, children, they don't listen to each other. So if we have a link like this with Allah, where we're not paying attention, then imagine what will be the loss. If there's no focus in our salah, we're not thinking about Allah, then tell me, what about the rest of my life? When will I remember Allah? When will I think about Allah? When? The Qur'an, the recitation, when will I enjoy reciting the Qur'an? Where will there be enjoyment? And, and an effect of reciting the Qur'an. So there's such an ocean, such an ocean, a sea, a vast sea of beauty and enjoyment. The Qur'an that when a person starts to read, he doesn't even want to get up. There Can there be a greater practice than this? I'm just telling you practical. You have salah, the greatest about the worship. And what makes us pray salah? Reciting the Qur'an. Say subhanallah, subhanallah. So, in any action, any action that we're doing, it's okay, fine. If we're not doing something, then we start praying salah. It's better than not doing anything. But if we're not taking the full benefit, and then how will we take our deeds to the court of Allah? What will we present? How will we ask Allah for rewards? Think about it. So what I'm trying to say is one, due to which we are here in this majlis gathering, we speak to each other, and I say this regularly, that our defects, spiritual defects, maladies, illnesses, we need to do away with them. We need to part with them. The defects that we have within us, and this is a big spiritual disease that we don't focus on Allah. We don't pay attention. So let's pay attention to this. Let's, let's delve into this now. This is foolishness that a person is sick, ill, and that gives permanent um, eternal loss. For example, if I have an illness, a disease, I know it's in me, I can feel it, I'll try to cure it. So we have closed all the doors to Allah due to not paying attention to Allah. The great scholars who come, they speak and give good speeches and there's a gathering. But tell me, that is there anyone really focused on what that person's saying? People's minds are somewhere else, everyone's sitting. Rather, if we think the words of the scholars are great, the Quran and Hadith, the words, they're so great when they're speaking that if they come into our minds and hearts, our life should improve for good. That The scholar sits down for an hour, hour and a half, he speaks about the Quran, he's not mentioning the Gita. He doesn't mention some of the book. They sit, the scholars, the ulema, on the member, so that I can speak and tell people something so they understand. But why don't we understand? Why? Why, don't, that, why doesn't it have an effect on us? And such a thing that doesn't pay attention has an effect on us. Allah Ta'ala says, even if I reveal the Qur'an onto the mountains, they will crumble to dust. So why does the Qur'an not come into our hearts? The effect of it, the reason is that we are severely ill. There's a sickness inside us. And what is that sickness? Say it loudly. What did I say? That we don't pay attention. We don't focus. We're not concentrating. Yeah? So tell me, this is a loss. Let's take the sheikh, the teacher. And there's a murid, the student. And the sheikh is speaking, giving nasiha to the student. But there's no focus, no concentration, no, no attention. So the student doesn't pay attention. So the amal will never come into the student's life. Then when he goes out into the world and wanders around, people will point fingers. Oh, look at him. He's the murid of this sheikh. Look what he does. Look at this action he's done. He's done bid'at, innovation. And people criticize, point fingers. And they will say this. Why? Because he's such a murid that he has not paid attention to the words of his sheikh. To the advice, practical advice. What's he trying to tell us? Why is he telling us to do this? What should we do? So what a big loss. For which reason? Because he's not paying attention. Just like you are all sitting here and I'm speaking to you. And many people's minds are lost at this moment in time. You're not focused. Your minds are somewhere else. You're thinking about something else. And if you're not paying attention, then you won't think, Oh, what did I do in my business? Somebody will be remembering his kids, children. Somebody think about sickness. I've got an appointment tomorrow or some other day. This is shaitan. Shaitan's wasawis. And he makes us uh, lose focus. So when there's a great discussion, and Allah has given us an opportunity, somebody sitting and speaking to you, addressing you tomorrow's Jum'ah, and Mashal Alims will give the speeches, and it's a beautiful day, divine day, great day, noor, man bathes, washes, comes to the masjid, sits down, so I'll hear something, will go into my ears, and soon as the person comes, he's, he's away. He's lost to Imam Sahib speaking, or somebody else is speaking. It's not the fault of the person who's dressing. It's not Sheikh Sahib's fault, is it? That the murid, he listens and he doesn't listen properly, and then he goes and does bad actions. Because he didn't pay attention. So the first point here is that a person, that even though we have issues and darkness in the world around us, when Allah gives us the means to understand the deen, to listen to the words of the deen, and despite listening, we keep on listening, we don't improve, and then we don't have attention, we're not paying attention, we lose all of the focus, and we lose the benefit of the gathering. And in the akhirah, we will not attain and earn anything. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand the point I've made? Is this not a bad thing? Of course it's a bad thing. 
So that's why in between I say Subhanallah. That's why I request this. So that you can pay attention towards what I'm saying. Even if you've lost attention, lost focus. That's why I'm saying this to you. Alhamdulillah. Allah Ta'ala, uh, He will fulfill the gaps in our lives. And then you pay attention to me when I say, somebody may be feeling sleepy, dozy. Uh, say a kalima straight away. Allah Ta'ala says, this is most beloved to me. Subhanallah. Aha. When you say yourself, then I'll understand you are paying attention. When I ask you to say it, then it means that I'm awakening you and I'm setting the alarm. You understand what I'm saying? This is the point. So when you say it yourself, subhanAllah, that means these words have penetrated your minds and hearts. So what did come out of your mouth? The praise of Allah. SubhanAllah. As you said again, haven't you? SubhanAllah. How can it be that a mu'min sitting and the Qur'an is being read and it's coming to his heart and the words of Allah coming into his heart, then obviously if he doesn't praise Allah from his lips, how can it be he doesn't do this? A person, he will be lifeless. It's ajib that he's sitting there like a statue or his heart's not working. How can it be Allah the Rabb is being praised? The normal person, if you praise your beloved in front of the shair, the shair praises your beloved and the person who's sitting, oh, he starts enjoying it. The, oh, I'm listening about my beloved. And he starts to go uh, around and feel really good. Say, for our Rabb Allah, Rabbul Alameen is being praised and we don't say nothing. Um, the person who doesn't speak, then understand that his tongue is lost. He has no look with Allah. Allah likes when he's praised. Allah says, the first of all, say, Alhamdulillah. They always keep on praising me and nothing else. Subhanallah. With, before Allah gave the Qur'an, what did Allah Ta'ala give to us? What did He say to us? That everyone say collectively, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah. Then we read the Qur'an. So this is a great name of Allah. Look how, now how much difference there is in our gathering that there's a lack of focus or if there's a focus. So Allah Ta'ala, with regards to tawajjuh, focus has said a great thing in the Qur'an. A great thing. And we don't listen, we don't pay attention. Are you paying attention to what I'm saying? Shall I mention what Allah Ta'ala said? First thing is this. That have we understood this illness? Everyone, do we have this illness? Our salah is being spoiled, our ibadat is being spoiled, our home affairs are being spoiled, and home affairs are being spoiled, relationships are being spoiled, environment is being spoiled, society is being spoiled, and our hereafter is being spoiled. Because we're not paying attention. Father is giving a siya and the son is not listening. His mouth there, he's saying yes, yes, nodding his head. And after a while, he will do something different. you say, oh, I said this to you. Uh, you didn't say this to me. You didn't say this happens, doesn't it? You didn't tell me. You didn't tell me, the murid says to Sheikh, when did you tell me? I can't remember, you didn't tell you this to me, we didn't discuss this. 10,000 times the student is reminded, and once a person is told not to do something, he doesn't listen. Why? Because when he comes to the masjid, he's there physically, but spiritually he's not there. Not listening. So all life long, he's wasting his time. That person is wasting his life because he's not paid attention. When we go to a good gathering, I'm going, then go there, full attention, full focus, full concentration. Go there with an empty basket and leave there with a full basket. So you take the pearls back with you. Allah will be pleased. Allah Ta'ala says, giving amal is in my control, but collect them, collect them, collect them. Like you're giving money, you get money, you collect it, save it. You don't spend it, but when the opportunity comes, you spend it. So in the same way, when you're hearing good things, the pearls are being distributed, collect them, hoard them, and one day you will spend them. You'll do amal. So at least you hoard the wealth in your pockets. At least you've got the, the, the wealth of the ilm. But we don't listen, don't pay attention. So when will the amal come? If we don't have the currency. So the first point we understand today is that nowadays our loss and what we are lacking is we don't pay attention, we don't concentrate, we don't focus. Our faces are there, but our hearts have dissipated. So what's the solution now to this? Yeah. What's the solution? But it cannot be that there's such a big disease and an illness that human beings, Allah Ta'ala will say, where's your salah? I say, Allah, here's my salah. Allah will say, what kind of salah is this? This is a salah where you were thinking about your shop and business. You were speaking to other people in your salah. Your mind was wandering. Your heart wasn't even there. What salah were you reading? You didn't even know what salah, what Imam Sahib was reciting when he went into sujood, how many prostrations he done. So today, the biggest point due to which we take loss, due to which we take loss, Allah says, Ud'u astajib lakum. Subhanallah. That such a great solution has given to us. Astajib lakum. Allah Ta'ala says, that whatever problem you have in the life, who gives us the problem? Who gives us the solution? We give the problems and who solves the problems? Allah. Who gives shifa? Allah. Who gives cure? Allah. Who gives wealth? Allah. Who gives mal? Allah. Who gives us our wife? Allah. Who gives children? Allah. Allah gives everything, isn't it? So Allah Ta'ala is saying, there's such a great situation that if I give you everything, then what have you to worry about? Allah Ta'ala says, Udu'u, ask from me and I will give to you, Allah Ta'ala says. Ask from me, but we don't do this. What a great path Allah Ta'ala has given to us. Great path. Na'udhu billah, na'udhu billah. Is Allah Ta'ala saying this for, no, for nothing? Or is He just saying this for nothing? 
Allah Akbar. If the Malik, the control, I say, if someone in the world says, come in the evening, I'll give you 10,000 pounds. We'll have yaqeen. Oh, he's a good person. He'll give to me. And you, I say, you said you're going to give me 10,000 pounds. Give it to me. He said, I said it. Yes, take it. So if Allah, the Rabb, is the whole, the, the, the Rabb of the whole universe saying, I'll give to you, then why don't we take from Allah? But we are foolish people. The Allah, I'm saying this verbally, that we are so foolish. And Allah Ta'ala said this to us on top of this. Allah Ta'ala tells us the maqam, the place. Allah says, your salah is such a great, great action. Allah Ta'ala says, I don't like that a person who prays salah leaves empty-handed from my court. Aha! Allah says, I don't like this. The Allah Ta'ala says, that after praying salah, Allah says, that this is against my uh, principles that you stood in front of me and you're not doing the ibadah properly I've given you the greatest worship salah and after this you don't ask properly and you don't attain and this is your foolish what have you done in your life? what have you done in your life? so until today we have never thought that we should ask for, from Allah specific things in our salah oh let's go to Allah let's go to Allah we would rather become you could say dishonored and disrespected in the world but we won't ask for help from Allah. Our hands are being raised. Our hands are raised. We have a need. And which person is there, man or woman, who doesn't have a need from Allah? Is there anyone in the world who has no need? Has no requirements? Is there anyone who doesn't have a requirement from Allah? Tell me this. Tell me, is there anybody? Is there anyone from the king, the king of the kings? Even he has a need that Allah Ta'ala can fulfill. Everyone has a need and needs help from Allah. Allah says, whatever you become in the world, but you will always be dependent on your Rabb Allah. You have to understand this, whether you accept or not, you are dependent on Allah. The person who believes is dependent and the person who doesn't believe is dependent. Everyone's dependent on Allah. So great mercy of Allah, great mercy see that he has given us the path Allah says ask from me and I'll give to you ask from me and I'll give to you what a great point and we unfortunate people due to this disease our hands are raised our hands are raised but we are not paying attention we don't know what we're asking for from Allah have I asked for anything from Allah what do I have I implemented I don't even know that we raise our hands we say Amin, and we say things we recite du'as we don't know what we're asking for isn't this happening does this not happen? That if a person's issues are not being solved and Allah says, I'll give to you, the reason is because we're not paying attention, we don't have a connection with Allah. Otherwise, there are such people, my friends, there are such people with the fadl of Allah, with the blessings of Allah, they are here, they came, they are here now and they will keep coming until Qiyamah, about whom Allah Ta'ala has said that their function is such that they raise their hands, Allah give us rain, and suddenly where there wasn't even a sign of a cloud, there is extreme heat within five minutes, Allah says, I change the climate and I send the rain to that place. Many examples. Many examples. Allah says, suddenly, where did the clouds come from? Where, how did they become dense? Where did the rain come from? Within five minutes, the climate changes in that environment. Allah says, why well, one of my servants raised his hands and asked for rain? I changed the climate suddenly and rain came. Has this not happened? So what was in his hands when he raised his hands and did dua? He had tawajjuh, focus. He was paying attention to Allah. Say, subhanallah, subhanallah. That's it. He had iman, belief, yaqeen, certainty. That individual understood that if I don't have yaqeen, if I don't pay attention, I won't succeed. Allah is with us always and I've made Allah go far from me due to my lack of attention so far. That Allah, I'm close to you. I'm here. And Allah says, I'm close to you. If you ask for me, I'll give to you. But Allah says, at the moment, I'm very far from you. The gap, because the distance in the love relationship is due to the heart distance. So if we're close to Allah, we can be my millions of miles away physically. But if we're close with the heart, then we are totally close. That it isn't a matter of distance, physical. It's a matter of spiritual focus. Allah says there's no physical distance that diminishes the love between the servant and Allah. Allah says that if you have love for me and I'm on the, my arsh and my, my affection and my love is very close to you, Allah says I'm close to you, then your jugular vein, I'm not far, you are far, Allah, Allah says, oh my creation, that you are so close, Allah is so close to us and we're still desperate for Allah's help, we're, we're dependent but we don't know how to ask from Allah, so what's the cure? Shall we get rid of this sickness? Then otherwise we pass away without getting close to Allah. So let's get rid of this illness, this spiritual illness. So Allah Ta'ala has told us in the Qur'an, there's nothing that's not in the Qur'an, Allah has given the cure. Allah has given the cure. وَذْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ Allah Ta'ala says, وَذْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ Say Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Who is telling us this? Allah's Qur'an. يَا أَيُّهَا الْمُزَمِّلْ Allah says, Allah is addressing who? His Habib, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is the cure? Allah Ta'ala gives the cure. 
that call to me, O people who are who are des- the desire to get close to me. Allah says, pay attention properly. Focus your thoughts, O foolish people. You'll get nothing if you're not paying attention. Ya ayyuhal muzammil. Allah says that we have to we will be wretched in this world and in the hereafter. Wadhkurisma Rabbika Watabatal ilahi tabtila. Allah says, listen to me with focus and concentration of Allah. How should we do this? Allah says, Wadhkurisma Rabbika Watabatal Watabatal ilahi tabtila. Allah says, focus on me. Remember me clear and uh, properly. Allah says, remember me, do my dhikr. So remember the name of thy Lord and devote yourself with a complete devotion. Aha, complete devotion. And many tariqahs Allah has given in the Quran. Qiyamun, You can stand and remember me, lie down and remember me. While you're walking, you can remember me. And on top of that, while you're eating, remember me. While you're wearing clothes, remember me. When you're walking, remember me. In the marketplace, remember me. Loudly, remember me. With a high volume, remember me. With a medium voice, medium volume, remember me. Many tariqahs, many methods Allah has given. You can remember me in, in isolation, on your own, or in a gathering. Many methods Allah Ta'ala has given. Many methods. Allah says, there are many methods to remember me. So many methods that you cannot argue about. Say, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Allah Akbar. Allah Ta'ala has given us the tariqah how to pray Salah, isn't it? So Allah says, do this, sujood, etc. But to remember Allah, Allah Ta'ala says, there are many ways to remember me. Loudly, quietly, openly, outside, inside, lying down, whatever. So many tariqahs and Subhanallah. With every method, each method has its own uniqueness, Effect the enjoyment you'll get in jahir loud dhikr, you won't get in silent dhikr, and by lying down or in your bed, you won't get that same enjoyment and effect as if you're standing sitting. In different ways of remembering Allah, and everyone is unique and has a unique, different effect. And the reward will be unique, its enjoyment will be unique, its effect will be unique, its tawab will be unique, and everything on each different way of doing dhikr has its unique effect. So you can't say if we remember Allah standing down, but if you sit down and remember Allah, the difference is between like the difference between the heavens and the earth. And there's a different link. If you sit down and remember Allah, different um, effect and mood. And Allah has given actions. If you say it loudly, the dhikr of Allah, different link with Allah. Many different ways and methods. So what's the method here Allah Ta'ala is saying? وَذْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ Allah Ta'ala says, إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا Allahu Akbar, say subhanallah. Dhikr is happening, dhikr. No, not every dhikr is the same. Ah, uh, we have to see here, is on which maqam is Allah Ta'ala saying, remember me. Just like I said before, that when you go to your bed and do dhikr, what is the reward there? That you will go into Jannah laughing. Laughing. That is dhikr. The same kalamat, but the maqam has changed, the environments change, the situations change, and the reward changes. The reward changes, the life changes. Why? Because now you're going to sleep. Allah Ta'ala knows best. The same reward, the same dhikr of Allah that we're doing it somewhere else. And when you go to your bed, then it becomes different. It becomes different. The reward becomes different. So what this means is wherever a person is, wherever Allah Ta'ala said, whichever method, don't waste your opportunity. There are benefits. Now if you say, oh, what's the benefit here? There's more benefit here. This is the biggest foolishness you can say. That when the doctor gives medicine, then do you ask the doctor what's in this? What's the ingredient? Gives the medicine, you swallow it, and it goes in. You have trust in the doctor, but we don't have trust in Allah. Allah says, do dhikr like this. We say, why like this Allah? Why not? No, understand if it's happening. It will happen like this, and it will happen in the best way indeed. The best way indeed. Very great indeed. Ulil al-bab, Allah says, that these things, the people of understanding, they will understand. And the foolish people, they won't understand these points. Allah Ta'ala has told us clearly, that the foolish person, you are may able to explain to that person, but the people of aql, they will understand. They say, subhanallah. Say it again, subhanallah. Say it again, subhanallah. Subhanallah, this is a great point. And now you are the people who are about to do dhikr. You are the dhakrin, you already do dhikr. Allah said, ulil al-bab, for the people of understanding. Now everybody can understand this, but the people of aql, wisdom, intellect, who are that qawm, the nation is one. There are very few and far between. The hadith says, there are so few in the dunya, that there will be people in millions and billions, and Muslims, and people who believe in Allah. But there will be so few people who do dhikr of Allah. Allah says, I'll send angels from the heavens to look for the dhakirin. Say subhanallah. Say subhanallah. So should we not be proud of this? Me, you, alhamdulillah, we are included in that group of people, that in this town, there are hundreds of thousands of people, and from that amount of people Allah selected this jamaat for this action of dhikr of Allah I'm not saying this the hadith and Quran tell us say subhanallah subhanallah so what a great reward a person jahil mad person like me a person who's useless and I lose this reward for one reason I'm doing dhikr and Allah says that look 
Allah says to the angels, go and look for those people, the men, those people, who do madhikar, the groups of angels descend from the skies, they call out, come, come, O inhabitants of the Arsh, where are you? There are so few people doing dhikr of Allah, let's look for them. And those people who are few doing the dhikr of Allah, what is their maqam in front of Allah, subhanallah. So let's create a bit of courage, determination. Okay, we're sinners, but don't leave the gathering of dhikr. Don't leave the gathering of dhikr, my friends. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala says this point, that people in that day and age won't even understand these points. The aql will not absorb. Allah says the Quran, the hadith, there's so much about dhikr, but it won't absorb into their heads. But who will understand? Ulil al-bab, those with wisdom and understanding. And this is aql mandi, this is wisdom and intellect. Now, for example, you are for this reason going to be Asked to stand on the day of judgment and called out as the people of understanding and wisdom. Wadhkurisma Allahu Akbar. Wadhkurisma Rabbika Watabatal ilayhi tabtila Allahu Akbar. So what's happening here? The person who doesn't have focus, who's not paying attention. Why? In dhikr he's not paying attention. Yes, so Allah Ta'ala says, but dhikr, if we focus, if you lie down, walking, sitting, whatever is your situation, and you remember Allah, if you do the dhikr of Allah in the right way, and with the focus, Allah says, then totally your focus and attention will be with me, and you'll get all the rewards and effects you need. Allahu Akbar. So if Allah Ta'ala is saying this, then will the cure not be there? Of course it will be there. So then imagine the salah of that person, that if you pray salah, you focus on Allah, and you're standing in salah, then your salah will be so good. And like the Sahabi said, that if you want to operate on my leg, or take something out, then when I'm in salah, then do what you need to do with my leg, so I don't feel the pain. And that's the Sahabi I speak about, to Wali Wallah, Wallah, I've heard this myself. He said that I don't want to have an operation. This wali of Allah said, the doctor said, this is a serious situation, you need to have an operation. He said, how, can I, how will you do an operation on me? They said, we'll give you uh, anesthetic. He said, no, I don't want anesthetic. I don't want to fool unconscious. He was a wali of Allah like this. He said, I don't want to take the medicine, I don't want anesthetic. They said, then you are in a dangerous situation. The doctors are begging him. You will have a problem. I said, don't do this. Please allow us to operate on you. Give us permission. We have to operate on you. You're in, in threat. This is Pakistan. And he said, no, I won't allow the operation to take place. The murids, the students are upset. How will the operation take place? Then Hazrat, Hazrat, you have to have an operation. No, why are you forcing me? Why are you making go, go, go unconscious? They said, we'll tell you to go unconscious so you don't have pain. He said, why didn't you tell me this before? If this is the issue, you'd have told me this before so that I don't feel the pain. If this is the reason that I'll have pain when I have the operation, then I'll tell you what to do. After Ishraq, after Fajr, when I pray two rakah, two rakah for Ishraq, when I start the nafil, you start your operation. At that time, subhanAllah. Subhanallah. And this is in this day and age, forget the Sahaba Akram for the moment, because he was focused on Allah. On who? In which way? Say it loudly. Through what? In which way? Through dhikr of Allah. Which dhikr? The tariqah that's coming now. With this tariqah. Like I said to you, every tariqah is unique. So we are doing dhikr. If you do dhikr in the morning, it's different. If you do dhikr now, it's different. Khatam khwaj gaan, dhikr is different. So this tariqah that Allah Ta'ala is mentioning in the Qur'an is a great method. And how will this give us an effect? He said, the shaykh said, when I pray Ishraq Salah, that after Fajr, he said, after Fajr, after sunrise, I pray Ishraq, you do the operation then. And they did the operation at Ishraq time, say, Subhanallah. And then they put the bandage on him when he prayed Ishraq. And he said, have you done your operation? They said, yeah, we've done it. He said, is it? I didn't even realize that you did this. They said, yeah, we've done it. First class, excellent result. He didn't feel the pain. So my brothers, that this is not something weird, we can't understand. We are jahil. We are foolish and mad today, that when we hear such things, and when someone like this is born, we say, where did this man come from? Is he some supernatural person? No, it's really that we are like monkeys and, and animals. Rather, we should all be like this. We read the Quran, but we've forgotten Allah Ta'ala's invitation. Allah says, وَذْكُرِسْ Allah Akbar is my name. And you remember my name. But Allah says, رَبِّكَ وَتَ وَتَّبَدْ بَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلَ They'll say, change, say subhanallah. Say subhanallah again. Say subhanallah again. What does Allah Ta'ala say? This is maraqaba. Maraqaba. What do the people, the Sufi say? Maraqaba. Dhikr in the heart. Silent dhikr that you do morning, evening, that I've told you. You don't listen to me. There's nothing. That's why we're still like apes and monkeys. We don't listen to me. Because you don't pay attention. When I tell you, so many times if you do dhikr in this way, then see what the Quran tells us. Allahu Akbar innaka la tukhlifu al-mi'ad Allah's words don't go to waste astaghfirullah Allah says wadhkur isma rabbika wa tabattal ilayhi tabtila this is maraqaba Allah says complete devotion sit silence close your eyes and don't move your tongue don't do dhikr with your tongue not loudly not not with nothing not don't say it with a low voice your body doesn't move nothing everything stops Allah says you just have to pay attention 
pay attention in your heart with every beat. Allah, Allah, Allah. This is what you have to do. Who is telling us this? A sheikh? A sheikh, a nabi, a prophet, a wali, a ghawth. Who is telling us this? The master of the universe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this prescription. It's not my father, not my grandfather, not my sheikh. Yeah, that you run away, you stand, oh, this is a dhikr, I can't do this. Allah is telling us this openly and in such a way. This is a great surah. Ya ayyuhal muzammil. This is a surah full of tasawwuf. Oh, my beloved Habib. Ya ayyuhal muzammil. Qumil layla illa qalila. Please wake up, my Nabi. This is the time for me and you to meet. Subhanallah. Keep vigil the night long, my Nabi. Save a little. This is for the Ummah, mercy. This is spirituality in this surah. That your Rabb, you meet him in this dhikr in Maraqaba. Hours and hours, the mashayik, our pious This is Hazrat. Uh, one Sheikh, uh, Rahmatullah, he used to sit after uh, Fajr till Ishraq and do dhikr. And after Isha, he would do Maraqaba. After Isha in the night, and he would do Maraqaba, dhikr in the heart until Tahajjud. And his marid at three times would say, Allah, Allah. Then he'd pray Tahajjud, then do Maraqaba again. He'd do silent dhikr. Then his marid would say, Allah, Allah. Then he'd pray Fajr Salah. Then he would do dhikr of Allah until Ishraq, sunrise. What was it that he was doing? Was he had tawajjah lillah, focus on Allah. Concentration. وَذْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ Allah says, وَتَبَدْتَلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا Allah says, focus on me. Atta atta complete devotion. Detach your body. Allah says, detach your body. Focus on your heart. Dim the lights. Put a, a sheet on your head so that there's darkness, so that you are not uh, distracted by the light. Examples. These are different ways. And you're in isolation. Allah says, come now, come now. And there's... Silence now, oh my friend, this night now is darkness now, everyone's sleeping, come my mahboob, come and meet me, Allah Ta'ala says, speak to me. And Ashik says to his beloved, that you are afraid that people are watching, this person will see, that person will see, or someone will see from the door. Now it's night, darkness, everyone's sleep, is told to silence, the dogs are asleep, everything vision, come now, come and see me. Come and see me. In the same way, the Ashik Rabb, the friend of Allah, he knows that all of the desires of the heart, the needs, the longings, all of the longing, the thoughts, the yearning, all of the words, all of the desires, everything Allah Ta'ala says that I've taken out of my heart, the human being says, Allah says, come to me now. And Allah says, come at this time so that the, the nur and the benefit can come to you. Allah says, aha, Rabbika. This is called maraqba. Close your eyes, focus on the heart, pay attention. And this tariqa you have to learn from a kamil sheikh. Complete sheikh. Go to him, learn this lesson, start this sabak, this lesson. And according to the instructions, do maraqba. And this maraqba with this, whatever stages you get, you get focus, concentration. Then you listen to the words of the sheikh. You understand the words of the sheikh. And people listen to the bayan and you hear good things. And they come into your heart, they absorb into your heart. And your life starts to improve. One verse of the Quran you listen to and your hair stand on end. And the tears come out of the eye and people say, what's happened to him? Why is he crying? I've seen people regularly. Why is he crying? He's shrieking, sobbing, sobbing, sobbing loudly. It's not a fake. It's not fake. People come to him and say, and they start reading the Quran in Tarawi, they start crying. Don't they people, when they recite Quran, this is drama. This is drama. If you ask them, that have you read Quran in isolation and cried? Have you cried then? That crying is different and this crying is different. My friends, this is something else. This is something else. And then in isolation is when a person should cry. In isolation when there's nothing to think about a person totally detached and from the world and thinks about Allah when he reads the Quran. That time in the night he's enjoying it. A person who can read Quran and do qirat, great imam and a person standing behind him, then he doesn't, he, he's lost in the closeness to Allah. After reading and hearing the Quran, if the talawat is great, recitation is beautiful, mashallah and tajweed is good. And he's reading with love the Qur'an and it's Fajr time. Then tell me what is the feeling of that person who's listening at that time, who's paying attention to Allah. His heart will feel that this shouldn't stop and his beard will be full of the tears and the moisture. So what's lacking in our eyes? Have we ever felt like this? It hasn't happened with me, mashallah. You are pious and some of you. Our hearts are like rocks, stones. Why? Because Allah says you don't do the cure. وَذْكُرْ إِسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا This is called مَرَاقَبَ خَفِي ذِكْر Hazrat. Muhammad Zakariya Sahib Rahmatullah Ali also mentioned this dhikr in his kitab. He said that dhikr in the heart silent is 70 times greater in reward as compared to loud dhikr with the tongue. To think about Allah one moment, one second is 70 times greater in thawab. More than that, rather. More than that. 
So we're going to do this or not? Tell me. Inshallah. Learn this dhikr from a friend of Allah. And go to the sheikh and say, teach us dhikr. And the sheikh will teach you dhikr. Maraqaba, silent dhikr. You need to get ijazah for this. Permission because it's a great action. For a great action, you need um, uh, ijazah. And become proper human beings and don't waste your time. So if the sheikh tells you to refrain from sin, but we run away from refrain. Oh, no, no, how can I leave these sins? We don't want to leave sins. Even if the dunya is wasted and akhra is wasted, but we don't want to leave the dunya. With the medicine, we have to refrain. So sheikh will tell you the dhikr prescription and what to refrain from. We should become proper human beings and animals and do dhikr. And inshallah, in this world and thereafter, we'll get the big benefit. Inshallah. May Allah give us the tawfiq. Ameen.